and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Behold, I have made my days as a tent breath. All of my life is before you as the age of nothing. Every, every, every man at his best state is altogether The Old Testament lesson this morning is taken from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Jerome, Jessica, grandchildren, other family members, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you should fear no evil, for the Lord is with you. His rod and staff will comfort you. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He anoints your head with oil. Your cup will overflow. 
Surely goodness and love and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here is the reading of the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. Good morning. We come with the gospel for this homegoing service. It's recorded in John chapter 14, beginning with verse 1, and it reads, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father has many rooms. If that were not so, I would not have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will go and come, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas replied, Lord, you do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Amen. I'm going to transform myself into uh, Brother Simon Moore, who wasn't able to be here today because of illness, so we pray for him as well. So let us have a word of prayer for the family, please. Let us pray. Most gracious and everlasting God, Father, Creator, the Alpha and the Omega. We come right now in the name of Jesus that this prayer may be heard. In the name of Jesus through that Mediator. We come to Holy Father for home on service. As you call your saint home, the Heavenly Father, you leave our soul in tears. But we say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, where there is no more sickness. We thank you where there is no more, no more aching. No more, dear Lord, for he are with you in the midst. So we come around right now, praying for that father that he was. Praying for the, the, the uh, person that he was, the, the people he touched, the lives. For the daughters, for the grandkids. Dear Lord, we just ask right now that you touch them one by one. Give them the power right now in the name of Jesus that you say right now in your word that we heard. That, that rock that comforts us. Comfort them right now. Be with them and guide them right now, the Heavenly Father. That they may know that it's he at rest right now. That they so may be at rest and at peace because, Lord, it's all about you. That we honor and glorify you. So we glorify you right now, the God. Give them the strength to keep calling on you. Will there be times when we feel sad and sorrow, but we do not worry no more because we know that you live and you live and you reign. So be with them and be with those who are with us right now, those who not, could not come for whatever reason. Comfort our hearts, our mind, our spirit. Be with us right now, dear Lord, that we may celebrate this ongoing service. Brother Woods was love. Brother Woods is still love. And we love you. Be with us right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
grace, mercy, peace, and comfort of Almighty God be with us as we dedicate this service of remembrance as a memorial to Brother Tyrone Woods. And we pray especially that the peace and comfort of Almighty God be with you, the family, because of the void that has been taken out of your family and you have now to believe and to do what you have to do. We pray that God's Holy Spirit will be there to provide peace and provide comfort for you as you do what you have to do. Amen. Amen. This is a memorial service <clears throat> and a service in which we are to say good things about the deceased. And I'm sure that all of us can say some wonderful things about the deceased. I'm sure that you as a family can say even more things than anybody else. But also including the church members that are here and the friends that are here, that you too can say some wonderful things about Brother Woods. Uh, I, as his pastor, I guess pastor for many years then, Missed out for 10 years and not back again, uh, sir. I can say some things. Not only as pastor, but also because uh, Tyrone served under my leadership in Hollybrook's Homes apartment for many, many years out there. And, and there were some wonderful things that went on during those times. But what I'd just like to share here this morning concerning Brother Woods is that he had somewhat of an extra sense of perception where he knew somehow when I went fishing. <laughs> you see, Ty Tyrone didn't fish, but he loved to fish. And I don't know how in the world he knew, but other than passing by the house and seeing the boat go, but he would call Got any French fish over there? <laughs> and for a long time, I didn't realize what was going on because he was calling after I had cleaned and dressed out the fish. <laughs> and sometimes it was in the freezer, frozen. And he would come by and get some fish. Then I learned I need to call him when I'm on the way home with the boat <laughs> so that he can come by. And get some really fresh fish. Fresh fish with the scales and the pepper still on them. And we always had a good time about that. But I'm sure all of us can say some wonderful things about Tyrone. Now, this is a, a memorial service. But the most important thing and the only thing that will last is that we can say about him, and I'm sure all of us can say it about him, that Tyrone knew the Lord. Amen. That he knew that he could not get into heaven by himself or by anything that he would do or say. That he knew that he had to believe on Jesus Christ and trust Jesus Christ as the psalm just read declared, that even though he would walk through the valley and the shadow of death, that Jesus would be there with him. That he would not take that journey alone. And then you heard in the gospel lesson those wonderful words coming from Jesus Christ himself. Words to comfort his disciples at a time like this. Saying to them, I will come back and get you and carry you to my father's house that I have prepared the rooms for you to live in. What a wonderful thing. The text that I selected for today is text Psalms 9. And a, a theme for that text Psalms 9 would be for us. You know, Tyrone is already gone on. Amen. And we have to thank God for the life that he, was, he allowed him to share with us here upon this earth. And we can't do anything for him or against him. He's already crossed over and transitioned into the home of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
But what's left that we can do is continue to hear God's word and hear God speak to us. And he does today in Psalms 90. And I'm trusting. It's, it's, it's the prayer of Moses, the man of God. So Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turned people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dried and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquity before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to seventy years or eighty, if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servant. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for the many days you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants your splendor uh, <laughs> to their children. Amen. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the works of our hands for us, yea, establish the works of our hands. Amen. Amen. This, this helps out because it's has a light with it. <laughs> and I appreciate it, but it sometimes it sometimes leaves you. Uh, anyway, numbering our days. God comes to this to us in this song, and the verse I want to pull out of this song is that verse 12. As you read it along with me there. It says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. For most of us in here, we probably would say, well, you know, we have birthdays, and we often number our birthday. We know how many years God has blessed us and we've lived here upon this earth. But we don't know how many days. And God tells us in this particular prayer that Moses prays for the Israelites and for himself as well, that we need to be taught to number our days. Because you see, while we are young and growing up in this world, it seems that we are always looking forward to a wonderful time. Looking for, teenagers are looking forward when they are grown and don't have to obey their parents anymore. You know, uh, those who have gone past teenagers are looking forward to a new job where they can get as much money as they want and live a good life here upon this earth. They're not thinking about the number of the days that God has given us. But when Moses prayed, Lord, teach us the number of our days, he had in mind that there is a beginning and that there is an end of time. And that we cannot wait till 
the end of our days to try to get ready and right for those days. We need to be ready and right all during those days because we don't know when and we don't know where and we don't know how. In this prayer, he declares, the span of a man's life is 70 or 80 years. I like that. Three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength, he says, there may be four score years. But no, if you get up to that four score years, you're going to have bursitis, rheumatitis, <laughs> diabetes, all the cancer, and all of those other things that come along. And all kinds of sorrow piled up on it. And we're going to soon fly away. Therefore, the prophet Moses declares and wants us, God, to help us to number our day so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. You know, when you think about it, that you, with all of these the wonderful things that you have nowadays, uh, when the scripture tells us the span of a man's life is 70 years, but maybe 80, but he said that's not promised to you because we know that God declared one day yeah. is like a thousand for me and a thousand like one day. So there's nothing that is promised to us. There's no number of days that is promised to us. That's why we need to number our days and we need to plan to apply our hearts and to wisdom. But with these little gadgets, when it says 70 days, you can easily figure it out. Tick, tick, tick. And you've got that 70 years of days turned into days would be 25,500 and some change. <laughs> and if you move on to 20, 80 years, this thing says that'll be 29,200. <laughs> you know, and all you have to do is TTT. And it's, it's that I just know. Given us to bless us along this way, so that we can apply our hearts unto wisdom. And what does that mean? That simply means that the most important thing of this things of this life that we live in this world is that we apply our hearts or we have a wise heart and that we recognize God Almighty. But God declared, man is like grass. He grows up looking good in the morning when the sun is not on it, but as the sun of the day comes upon it, it withers up and dries up. Man is like a vapor, it says, that soup, and it's gone. So the most important thing for us is to have a heart of wisdom. And that heart of wisdom teaches us, turns us, directs us to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That heart of wisdom says to us that there is no way that I can go back to heaven with Jesus when he comes unless I have him in my heart as my Lord and Savior. There's no way unless I've taken the time out in my day to day and confess him as my Lord and Savior and acknowledge that God has given him as a free gift to us. All we have, have to do is to receive him. Receive him in our hearts and God's promise is that he will come back to meet us when a time like this comes, and that he will walk with us in the valley as we go through it to come to be with him in heaven. That is numbering our days. And you know, God, this, Moses asked that God teach us, and God teaches, and, and God teaches with some object lessons. You know, God, God uses, we use object lessons when we teach sometimes, though. God does too. God sends sometimes a little sickness and a little pain, a little suffering, and you've heard people say, boy, that was such a terrible ordeal that I went through that I thought for certain that I was going to die. God teaches, he, he brings a little lesson along to help us to know that we are closer today than we were when we first 
ultimate lesson that God brings to us is that he brings death before us and showed us that there is an end time. There is an end day. And we need to be prepared for it now before that day comes. For when that day comes, it will be far too late for us to prepare. May God, through his Holy Spirit, guide, direct, and continue to comfort you and the family and keep you safe and protected as you go through uh, losing the uh, man of the house, I would like to say, because uh, that's how I knew him and many of us here at the church knew of him. May God bless you in that.
on those who've traveled long distance in order to get here for this service of remembrance, O oh Lord. We ask you to bless them, guide, protect them with your holy angels, keep them safe as they return back to their homes. And then, dear Lord, for all of us here, we pray that you will bless us through that prayer that you taught your disciples to pray in your presence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you 